its prize and when it flows down from the cross my sins were gone my sins forgot there is a grave
that tries to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three You may be seated because after that wonderful song and the message it proclaims, we get to do something as a church, as the body of Christ, that says it in a more symbolic way. I'm going to ask those who will serve us to come ahead because today we want to partake of the Lord's Supper, communion. Now think of the term communion. We are communing with Christ in doing this. And the Bible teaches us that every time we do it, we are showing, preaching, revealing the Lord's death till He comes. And I want to say it very, very simply. If you know what this means and you are partaking of it, you have not one thing to worry about the rest of your life. Father, as we partake of this holy meal, I pray that your body and your blood will become more real to us than ever before. Thank you for Calvary. Amen.
I suppose I've done this hundreds of times as a pastor and there have been all types of illustrations about the body and the blood and explaining why Jesus did it with his disciples on that night and I would venture to say that most of you are conversant with what this really means so I want to say it like this today. And I'm repeating what I said earlier. If you truly believe this represents his body and his blood and you receive it into your life, not only as an element, but by faith, you have nothing to fear from now on. You have nothing to worry about. God takes care of His children. He takes care of His obedient children. He takes care of His disobedient children. He takes care of His children who regard Him highly, frequently, and He takes care of His children who kind of wander. But if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that as you receive this, you are acknowledging that, proclaiming that. I came here to tell you, everything is under control. God is sovereign. I look around a building like this and uh, sometimes I will turn and just kind of pan congregation behind me sometimes I'll watch the choir in front of me and I see people crying and I know some people are crying because they're happy and blessed but I know others are crying because things didn't go well this week and others are crying because you can't take the pressure anymore you don't think you can do this another day and some of you are crying because you're hurting your body hurts. 
And some of you are crying because your children have broken your heart. There are all kinds of reasons to cry. But I want to tell you, He sees every tear that falls. And one of these days, He's going to dry your tears and you will never again shed one. But we're still here. It's still now. It's still called today. So this is why we do this. He hasn't come yet. But till He does... I thank him for his body that was beaten and bruised for me. I thank him for his blood that was spilled for my sins. I thank you that because he gave himself, I can have him. And because he, as the grape that made this juice, was squeezed and stomped, so the body of Jesus was squeezed and his blood poured out so that Whosoever believes will live forever. Thank you for your body, Jesus. Thank you for your shed blood, Jesus Christ. Stand with me. Let's sing with David. Oh, people for eternity. Turn around and smile at 15 or 20 of them while the ushers come. I know there are some ushers somewhere over here. There you are, Clarence. Some of you can be seated who are already seated, and some of you can stand who are already, yeah, just make up your mind. Let's go ahead. You do what you want to do. We thank you, Father, for blessing us so that we may bless others. We thank you for blessing us beyond our imaginations. We give back to you today. May the name of Jesus be proclaimed. Amen.
Have you heard about Jesus? He lives forevermore. Out from the grave, He came forth. Yeah, yeah. Eternal life is our reward. Thank uh-huh. you. 